Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, run it back. Good Thursday morning. Welcome to Run It Back, FanDuel TV. Look at us, guys. Everyone looks like they got a great night's sleep. We're in good mindsets. Is that maybe not Chandler, but everyone else looks really, really great. We feeling good? Yes, there it is. We're going to start doing this every morning. I don't care. Uh, Stadium Insider, Sean Charania, Chandler P., Lou Will. My name is Michelle, and we got a lot of basketball because things are winding down. Everything matters. Everything matters. First up, Timberwolves. Nuggets. This was a big one. Uh, Jokic, no surprise here. Leads his team past Minnesota, 116-107. He finished with 41, 11, and 7. Oh, oh. Jamal Murray, 20.6 assists. Anthony Edwards had his 25. And oh. after this one, Mike Malone said that nobody, and I mean nobody, can guard Jokic one-on-one. Chandler, you agree? Yeah, uh, that's the most <laughs> obvious statement Durr. ever. This dude, yeah, he's been doing this for years, and it really is crazy what he does. And, and look, at we're talking about against Rudy Gobert, most likely the defensive player of the year, and we're talking about the Minnesota Timberwolves, who's by far the best defensive team in the NBA. And watching this game, it really was crazy because they're so active. They're flying around. They mix things up a little bit. They started Nas Reed on him to start the game and had kind of Rudy Gobert kind of floating and see if he could be more effective help side. But there's no answer to this dude. He's too big. He, he's figured out his <laughs> angles so well where you can't put anybody smaller on him because they'll overpower him. You can't put anybody big on him because he can basically their point guard and can handle the ball and then give him too much space to create for everyone else in that starting lineup. So, yeah, there, there's not one person on the planet that can guard him. Most nights, two people can't guard him because he's so good at seeing the double team coming. He's to get off the ball, to give other guys and his other teammates wide open looks. So uh, and it really is crazy how much better and how much like unbelievably offensively he's gotten over the years to where now he puts every single defense in a bind he makes them make a decision whether they're going to double whether they're going to play me straight up and i'm just going to go get 40 50 points tonight uh if you're going to double team me triple team me he's going to have 15 plus assists so there's there's no real recipe besides play physical with him and try and make it as difficult as possible because you look up at the end of the game and the dude is going to get his numbers he's going to dominate um and, and there's no real stopping him i mean i don't know what to add lou is there anything to add <laughs> Yeah, eat that, Tony Kukoc. <laughs> yeah, eat it, Tony and Kevin Hart and Cedric the Entertainer. Everybody's piling up on Jokic. <laughs> Kevin Hart? What What did Kevin Hart have? Anyways, we go down a rabbit hole with Kevin Hart. <laughs> okay, we're not going to do Kevin Hart right now. He's a Philly <laughs> fan. I can't take that seriously. Anyways, um, Nuggets are 56 and 24 this season. We, we all have our opinions on how the West will play out, who will go to the finals and all that good stuff. But the question that we can ask is, is this Nuggets team better than the championship team they had together last season, Lou. Absolutely. And, and, they're, and they're better because it's basically the same team. So when, when you have guys that buy into the goal of, of reaching the championship again and winning the championship again, it's a lot easier for your team to operate. Everybody understands their role on this basketball team. You don't hear any controversy about somebody wanting more touches or asking for trades or any of that. All of these guys have bought into what Coach Mike Malone has put in, in place for them. And they believe in their best player. They believe in Joker. They believe that he's going to get them to the promised land. And, and it's a total buy-in from top to bottom when you see the um, the the everything that you get from players on, on that basketball team, from, from, from Murray to the KCPs to the Reggie Jacksons, you know, down to the bench uh, and the guys that come in, this team is by far better than they were the last time that we've seen them in a championship run. Yeah, That's I agree. With you. And, and it's it's simply because it's just another year of knowing their role. Like Mike, Michael Porter, you see, he doesn't take his bad shots anymore. He knows his role. He knows when to take those long threes in transition. He knows when he's hot. He's got a little bit of a longer leash. Peyton Watson, uh, we talked about him a little bit uh, earlier in this season. He's kind of had an up and down inconsistent year. The dude had six blocks last night. So if you can get that kind of energy on this team that's already so good offensively and you can plug him into certain stints of the game to have him go block shots, to go rebound, to go lock up another team's offensive score, that's going to be big. And the one thing I didn't like is them downplaying this game. Everyone knows this, hmm. this was a huge game because home court advantage in a Western conference that's so deep 
is so, so big. And last year, they had home court. They went 10-1 and one at home going on to win the championship. And just knowing that every round this year, there's not going to probably be any blowouts. There's not going to be there's not going to be many sweeps. So it's nice knowing that every single game seven is on your home court. So the downplay of this game to me was, was I guess, a ploy because I know both teams really wanted this game because home court advantage and this conference this year when it's so stacked – is super important and the and the nuggets this year they're 33 and 8 this year at home they have the best hmm. home record in the western conference they wanted the one seed and now they put themselves in position to really go get it yeah let's manifest it's hard to that no it's hard to downplay when you when your best player got 40 and your, yeah. team, and your team has 31 assists on shared buckets so you can say what you want to say but they cared about this game it showed up in the play hey. And then afterwards, they went to Malone, and then Malone said, well, we care more about health than seeding. He's like, what? You just played this dude 40 minutes. <laughs> you, want, you wanted that number one seed. And get it. They're confident. They think they can beat anyone else, but they were going to win this game. Stop it. I want, yeah, I like the idea of just, like, scare everybody else. The fact that we're talking about them being better than their championship version is, is a little terrifying. I mean, the Timberwolves were in this game. It wasn't a blowout by any stretch of the imagination. Chandler, does, does anything that happened last night, and reminder, we still don't have Cat, but does anything that happened last night change your opinion of Minnesota? Are they still uh, competitive against this Nuggets team if it comes down to that? Where do you put them? Yeah, if anything, I, I have even more confidence in Minnesota Timberwolves. I think a lot of people, including me, are sleeping on them just because we haven't seen them do it before. And them and OKC kind of came out of nowhere. And they're one of these teams that are on the rise, uh, you know, playing against these older proven teams like the Denver Nuggets. But when you watch them play in that first half, especially their defense is sweltering. They're so long. And it starts with Rudy Gobert where he can clog the paint. He changes the whole dynamic of teams offensive when he's down there. Jamie McDaniels, the unbelievable wing defender. And then when your best player, Anthony Edwards is busting his ass on both sides of the ball, it doesn't happen anymore. So yeah, I, I love this team. They're deep. They have really, really good role players. They're well coached by Chris Finch. Um, and, and I do really, really think they are going to, you know, survive in advance, at least to get out of the first round and then see what happens. But this is a team that is playing also without their second best player. That's a huge hole to fill when you're talking about a guy like Carl Anthony Towns, who is their stretch for 20, 25 points a game guy. And without him, they kind of still didn't miss a beat. I think to be elite, they need him and they need to be fully loaded, but they're still a really good team without Carl Anthony Towns. So you got to give these other guys credit that are playing for them. Nice surprise. Shams, uh, I'm just going to throw a name out there and maybe you could educate the world as to who this dude is and why we should know more about him. Tim Connolly. Tim Connolly spent nine years in Denver. He was an architect of that championship team, uh, this Denver Nuggets championship team. And then he goes to Minnesota in 2022. And you look at the top two teams in the Western Conference right now, his old Nuggets and now the Wolves. And Mark Laurie, Alex Rodriguez, they identified him, they targeted him. It was their vision to bring in Tim Connolly to Minnesota in 2022. And they committed really an unforeseen price in Minnesota in that marketplace. Five years, $40 million to bring in one of the best executives in the NBA. Glenn Taylor had to ultimately sign off on that. But it was really Rodriguez and Lurie's vision and ambition and drive to bring an executive of that caliber into Minnesota. And, they, and they've given him the free reins to go and transform this Timberwolves culture that we're seeing now, he goes out and makes the Rudy Gobert trade, signs Kyle Anderson for free agency, trades for Mike Conley Jr., trades for Monte Morris, and we know the turbulence that now exists in this war for the Timberwolves between Glenn Taylor and Alex Rodriguez and Mark Laurie, and, and in all of that, I'm told Tim Connolly has an opt-out in his contract after the season. So after year two, it was supposed to line up with this ownership transfer with Alex Rodriguez and Mark Laurie taking this this team over, but now with, with what we're seeing playing out between these two sides, I've reported on it, the fact that Glenn Taylor believes that they violated the contract, and obviously Alex Rodriguez and Mark Laurie being firm that they have all the necessary documentations, funding to have complete ownership of this team. Uh, there's no sign of this ending here anytime soon, but this is obviously someone the, the Wolves can't afford to lose, and the whole NBA is aware that Tim Connolly, in theory, could be a free agent and leave the Timberwolves, in theory, um, but they could also rip his deal up and give him a new extension this offseason. Definitely something to keep an eye on. That's I crazy. So that general 
Homers even have their own free agency now. Yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> and also, don't forget, remember last year, even us, we were shitting on this trade, saying it could go down as one of the worst trades in the history of the NBA, talking about this Rudy Gobert trade. So clearly Tim Connolly knows more of what he's talking about than we do, because it seems to be working just fine. I just love the idea that Tim Connolly heard all of everybody. It wasn't just us. It was everybody saying that was possibly the worst trade in the history of all things. Uh, and he must have just been, I don't know, either he's sweating it out or he was sitting back just waiting. Either way, brilliant. Brilliant that we have a free agent possibility in the uh, in the president of NBA team's world. All right, we had another game last night. Um, the Bucks played. Of course, they don't have Giannis, and they won't. Uh, playing Orlando. They beat them, though, 117-99. Bobby Portis with 39-5. and five. Dame Lillard with 29 points, 8 assists. Paolo Bancaro had 20, and this is now back-to-back -back wins for this team after they lost those four straight. Obviously, the Giannis cloud looms, Chandler, but do we feel better? The same? Where are we on Milwaukee? Well, I don't feel better because Giannis's health is, you know, up in the air. And without without him on the floor in the playoffs, it's going to be tough. Now, can they get by in the first round with whoever they draw? If Bobby Portis is playing like this and Dame Lillard's putting up the numbers he's putting up and they're holding teams to 99 points defensively. Yeah, I think they I think they can. I think they can beat whoever gets in that seven spot after the play in. Um but no, I think big picture, obviously, you want Giannis on the floor. You need Giannis on the floor. We talked about it yesterday when it's one of those non-contact injuries. Um, and I know they're saying everything's good image-wise and the, and the Achilles is all intact, but that doesn't just heal overnight. So that is that that is going to take a long time. But when you do have guys like Portis and Connaughton and Crowder and these, and these older guys that can sub in, it's got to be a collective effort. And also Chris Middleton, if Giannis is out, Chris Middleton's got to be in and mm. he's got to be the guy and he's got to be their closer at the end of the games when Dame Lillard is having an off night. So I, I still I still have hope for them because, again, everyone talks about how good of a season Orlando's having. And, and right now we'd still take Milwaukee in a series over them right now. It's because of games like last night where they just are way more talented, they're older, they're more experienced, and we just believe them more. So... The Bucs, to me, are kind of in the same boat as the of the Phoenix Suns, where they're so talented. They have so many players that can go and get buckets and offensively can explode that if they're clicking and they happen to do that for a series, they're going to be a tough out no matter what. Obviously, more so with Giannis in the lineup. And there it is, Shams, Giannis. That's good. I mean, this is obviously going to be a question every single day until we see him back out on a court. Would you have anything uh, update-wise for Giannis? Giannis is out the rest of the regular season, the final three games, as, as we expected. He's beginning. He began yesterday immediately once he knew it wasn't the Achilles tendon. It is a calf strain. He's beginning around-the-clock rehab treatment. And so the playoffs are about 9, 10, 11 days away for the Bucks. And there's obviously hope. There's, there's you know, with, with Giannis, these calf strains, they can be one to two weeks at minimum. But with Giannis, of course, he's superhuman. He's come back from these injuries before way earlier than anyone expected. And so there's obviously going to be that hope that he can do it again, and he's going to do everything he can to try to be out there in game one of, of the playoffs. Uh, and I had someone tell me yesterday, this man will do what he wants and what he feels is right. And <laughs> even though it is a calf injury, this is something that you, you don't want to pull again. You don't want to overcompensate. And just on that leg, he's had Achilles tendonitis. He's had a hamstring injury and now this calf injury. So three injuries over the course of the season on the same leg. We'll see how rehab treatment goes, but he's beginning that process around the clock. It, it's it, it's going to be a lot. I mean, I'm curious from Chandler and Lou's perspective, like, do you guys think he makes it back for game one? Yeah, well, listen, these guys are coming back in four weeks from torn MCLs and ACLs, so this should be a three-day thing right here. This is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about That's ACL, weird. but definitely meniscus. <laughs> <laughs> but... Lou, you know, the calf, the, the hamstring, these things linger, man. And every you can sneeze and you can re, re like irritate this thing. So like it, this is something where I'm sure someone's living with him. I'm sure it's like you said, around the clock, 24 seven, but mostly it's just staying off it. So at time is his only concern. It's not really on his, his side with nine, 10 days till the playoff start. So again, this isn't something with his future is still, uh, his, his future is still really bright. He's still got a lot of basketball to play. I don't know if it's worth rushing him back for a first round series, but obviously they know they're a completely different team with him. Can I ask yeah. you like ca calf rehab? What, what is it? Just a lot of machinery zapping. What are we doing? I think all of this stuff is connected, right? It, like it started with his hamstring. And I think sometimes mm -hmm. when you're dealing with a hamstring, you're trying to take pressure off of that. 
and you begin to overcompensate and you start bothering with other things. You start bothering with the calf. You start bothering with the Achilles. So I think some rest, if you give them an opportunity to rest for, for six to 10 days and get an opportunity to really let everything reset, let his hamstring rest, I think that does him, that does him a world of good and it gets him back on his feet. And see, the problem is too, yeah, you're Michelle, it, it's, it's rest, That's- it's massage, it's ice, it's stem. It's, it's a combination of things. They're probably dry needling it. I mean, they're, they're probably doing a bunch of stuff, but at the same time, how is he also staying in shape or when he can't really be on his legs and his feet? So he's probably doing a lot of pool workouts. He's probably doing a lot of stuff on the underwater treadmill, things like that, to where it's non-impact, but he can still get his heart rate up. So when it is healed and somewhat ready to go, he doesn't have to have that whole week, two week period of getting back in shape. This deep in the, this deep in the season though, Chandler, I think he's all right with his shape. You know, we're what five, six months in now. He can be our. This is just a long week. This is an All Star weekend. I wouldn't really overreact um, mm. to it. It is gonna it, it is gonna be a little bit, but if this was earlier in the season where he's still working to get himself in tip top shape, I would have a different opinion. Going into the playoffs, I think he's where he needs to be with his with his with his win and his shape. Well, the good news is uh, Dame Lillard is averaging 32 and eight when Giannis isn't on the court. Um, I guess the question, Lou, is how do you ensure that we can keep that trend going for Lillard, especially until we get Giannis back? And I don't know why I'm saying we, by the way. Very odd timing yeah. for that. <laughs> he, he, he's going to play at a high clip. You got to think when Giannis is on the floor, it's it's just natural to defer to him and, and try to play through him. If you're Dame Little, if you're Chris Middleton, it's just natural. When he's not on the floor, Obviously, you can be way more aggressive. Dan can go out there when he's not on the floor, shoot the ball four or five times in a row, and nobody will have anything to say or anything. When Giannis is out there, it's quite natural that you're gonna you're gonna come down the floor two or three trips. If you miss a shot, you're gonna look for him, and that's just that's just natural. It's a natural pecking order when you have guys that's so talented in this league that's had the success and accomplished the things that they have. Giannis is a former MVP, so if you're Dame Lillard, you got to respect that. So when he's not on the floor, you can go out there and just go do your thing. So that's just a natural deference. I don't know how they get this out of him when Giannis is on the floor. Uh, The loss for the Magic, by the way, puts them at the five spot now, and they've got games remaining that are against both the Sixers and, once again, against the Bucks. Chandler. Uh, Do you see, I mean, I'm looking at the standings now. How much further do they go? Do they drop? What are you thinking? I mean, yeah, they could definitely drop. They're tied right now with Indiana, same exact record. But yeah, I can see them definitely drop. Those last two games are not easy, and both those teams are kind of fighting for position here. So I think either way, no matter where they fall, Cleveland's not going to be an easy series for them. And if they fall to six, New York's definitely not going to be an easy uh, series for them. So I, I think they're going to try and win these games. I think you want the highest possible seed, especially when you're growing a team. You don't want to teach habits of – uh, you know, doing this where you, you know, you're standing, you're watching the standings and you're trying to match up with whoever you want. I think if you're Jamal <laughs> Mosey right now, you're saying, okay, we've had a great year. We're young. We're building something special here. Let's win out. Let's go into the postseason as much as, as much as a positive vibe as we can. And whoever we get, let's go. But yeah, if I'm them, I want to stay right there in that five seat because I'd rather play Cle- uh, Cleveland than the Knicks. Uh, let's move on to Suns Clippers because it- <sighs> I, I don't even know anymore what's happening here. Suns at Los Angeles. No Russ, no PG, no Harden, no Kawhi. <laughs> what even is that? Uh, the big three, though, for Phoenix combines for 87 in the win. Devin Booker with 37. Beal, 26. Kevin Durant had his 24. You know, they lost the two straight. Honestly, I think it's safe to say they've just never really found it all season long. But it seems to be the overall consensus that because they are veterans and they are superstars, they can still get it together in the playoffs, Chandler. Do you still stick to that theory? I mean, at what point do we not when they lose in, the, in this year? <laughs> like when they lose four to one to Minnesota and it's just over for them. We said, damn, what could have been with this big three? Like it, it, it's, it is crazy. Cause I do still feel like they can put games together. Like they did last night, which again, they played a team where Brandon Boston uh-huh. and Bones Highland took 25 plus shots. So like this, <laughs> this one almost you could throw out. It doesn't even count. That wasn't the Clippers they played last night. But I, I th- my thing with them is I've said it all year long. They're so they're dangerous offensively because they have the pieces and they have proven scores. They have two of the best scores in the league. So I think any given night, yes, they can go off. But 
I'm starting to lean the other way. It's crazy. Like they haven't put it together. They haven't done this against good teams consistently. Uh, it's crazy looking at the record. They're 47 and 33 and they're seventh. Yeah. I, feel like usually, I feel like usually that's like home court advantage. So <laughs> it is a tough break for them that this year when they did form this big three, the, the, the Western Conference is deep as I think I've ever seen it. Um, but it's going to be tough, man, because no matter where they finish, seven, eight, they're still going to have to beat one of these teams, whether it's going to be the Thunder or the Timberwolves. And how the Timberwolves played last night and how they can defend and they can switch and throw different looks at you, that's going to be hard. And I can tell you, Oklahoma City, I don't care how young they are, they are confident and they can hit you with an array of things too. So I do like them over both of those teams instead of the Nuggets, even instead of the Clippers. But – yeah, I mean, at what point are we just delusional here? And we're running out of time. Think about it. There's two more games. I'm still sitting here saying, oh, well, they're going to figure it out. Like, no, they're not. I think this, <laughs> yeah, this is who they are. I just think who they are can play good on a nightly, uh, on, on any given night. Just they don't do it on a nightly basis. So I'm feeling it. Nothing. It's I'm not, zero. I'm not, I'm not feeling it. Like, again, usually this is the time where you realize – okay, this team is dangerous, and they're, they're showing you that they're dangerous. They're showing that they're going to be one of those teams to reckon with. I just hadn't felt that from this Phoenix Suns team yet. I don't know if it's a defensive thing or whether they're still trying to figure out who's going to be the closer, who's going to be the person that's going to get the game going, who's going to take up the slack in the middle of games. It just seems like something is off there, and it's not working, especially with how loaded the West is. Usually, if you got two or three good teams in the West – we can look at it yeah. and say, yeah, maybe they'll turn it on. But again, they're almost a 50-win team in the seventh place. They can't afford it right now. They can't afford to still be trying to figure it out. So I'm, I'm just not feeling it. Lou, let's take a look at the Clippers, because before this one, Ty Lue said that Kawhi's absence is really of no concern to him. Um, and I want to believe him, Lou. Should I? I mean, he, he knows something that I don't know. So no concern, um, you know, maybe that he, he has a timeline that we don't have and he knows when Kawhi be back or or the severity of the injury and, and what Kawhi is going through. And that's the reason that he's saying that. But if this is something serious and Kawhi is not in the line of come playoff time, it should be a concern. It should be something that he's worried about. You know, that's one of two of his best players, you know, out of the out of three guys that he has started. And Kawhi has been the best player coming out of that starting lineup. Originally, I said it was Paul George. As the season went on, Kawhi began to separate himself as the go-to guy on, on his Clippers basketball team. So him saying that, he has to know something that we don't know. I'm sure Kawhi will be back soon with him saying that. God, I hope so, because it'll be a ripoff, yeah. because we now know that the Clippers and the Mavericks are locked into playing one another uh, in the first round. I love that we can at least – Start looking at this one, Chandler. I know how you feel about Dallas, and we're looking at this Clippers team right now. Early thoughts on this one. I like Dallas because I am concerned about Kawhi. That's funny. I'm wearing the hat. Didn't even realize. I know. Oh, nice hat. <laughs> uh, Kawhi, I mean, maybe Tyron Lue. Obviously, he knows something we don't know. Like Lou said, if he's not concerned, I think I guess we shouldn't be concerned. But if he's missing games at this point of the season, clearly something's bothering him enough to kind of get rest and, and get him prepared for this series. Now, when you look at the series, this, there's history here. They, they've had great series, and Luka has absolutely dominated this series. And I just think Dallas is the hottest team right now in the NBA. They've won something like 18 of 20 games or something. They're clicking. Luka and Kyrie have found this balance of offense. They found these great role players with the trades they made with Gafford and P.J. Washington and bringing in guys like Derek Jones on a minimum uh, a vet minimum contract. Those guys, those three guys have really helped the balance of this team. They've really helped Luka. And everyone knows Luka's not a great defender, not one-on-one -on -one defender. But when you have those three guys on the floor, he can now become a solid contributor on the defensive end. He, he knows how to help. He knows his timing. So that alone has helped this team grow. We talk about how deep they are. They have size now with Kleber and Powell and Lively. So I've always said this is the deepest, best team Luka's had. And so... It would be hard for me not to take them in this series, how well they're playing, especially right now at this point of the season, and how well Luka. If listen, if they won five more games this year, Luka Doncic is why he's winning the MVP. It just he they happen to be the five six seed, and and they're not in the top like SGA, like Joker, like like Jokic. So he, the things he's doing this year are insane, and this is the best team Dallas has moving forward, offensively and defensively. Kyrie Irving seems happy; he's straight balling. So I like the Mavs in this series. I love that for but, this show, it, it's Lou versus Chandler. 
This is awesome. Yeah, it, Mavs Clippers. <laughs> let's, let's continue on because in, in the playoffs, if they take away some of the things that make Luca comfort comfortable, if they take away some of the things that that that, that Kyrie does that makes him comfortable, who's that third guy on the Dallas Mavericks who can carry you to some wins, who can make big shots for you, who can carry you down the stretch? Who's that guy? With the Clippers, you can go Terrence Mann, you can go Norman Powell, you can go Russell Westbrook. Oh, and you can go James Harden, by the way. You know, even though he, he's turned himself into a distributor and he's more concerned with those guys, if he wakes up and decides he wants to put a 30 on those guys' head, it's going to be trouble for the Dallas Mavericks. And we have a rich history of struggling with the Mavericks. I think this is the year that we put that to bed. And I'm saying we because I'm I'm, I'm affiliated. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm saying we, so I still like the Clippers in this one. Hey, Lou, let me tell you something. Luca is averaging 34, 10, and nine and a half, bro. There's nobody that can give him something that he hasn't seen before. Nobody. It's like it's like playing the Nuggets. You can't take away what Jokic does. So I agree. That who is the third guy? Is it going to be Tim Hardaway? Is it going to be P.J. Washington? Those guys really can't create their own shots. But I'm not. There's nobody that. There's no defense in the world that can stop Luca. Let alone Luca. That's what I'm saying. But if you jump the game up, if, as soon as Luca cross half court and you want to throw doubles at him, you want to throw traps at him every once in a while after eight. Then Kyrie's and, going one on one. Right. But listen, now you, say we trapping Luca. Kyrie is going one on one. Now you're running a jump defense at him. You're swinging the ball to who? Like who's gonna who's gonna be the guy? Yeah, that can that can work in a game or two. But for a series, to think that Luca's gonna go thirty five and ten for a series from some of the world's best athletes, some of the best defenders that the game has got to offer. If, Ka if Kawhi Leonard is back in that lineup, I don't know. Who's the third guy? So when he's it comes down it, to... He's done it before, and now he's got a better team. He'll do it again. He's done it a, he's done it a game or two. Other than that, he's going to need somebody to win him a game in these playoff series. But for sure, Shams, you, you're right. They should bet, right? Like, there should be a good bet between you oh, two. Oh, there'll be some that we There'll be some side action we'll, here. You better believe it. We'll, we'll, we'll be in L.A. a lot. we got to have a dinner. Yeah. And one of them is going to pick up the tab. How about that? I was going to say, Shams and I aren't going to bet. We just get the prizes from you two. Maybe Fando gets us all four courtside for you know, game one. Maybe. I don't know. Wow, you could be my agent. That was, that was quick, quick negotiation from Chandler. <laughs> he went for the big one there. By the way, is the is the Luca not getting more love for, for MVP, Lou, just simply as Chandler said, because they're in that five seed? rather than higher. Is that really what we're looking at? No, I, I just think I, I, I got to concede. I just think Joker has separated himself from the pack. So I don't think this is a Luca thing. I don't think this is an SGA thing. I think Joker has been playing at a level that's so high, it really doesn't matter who comes in second place. So I don't think this is a personal thing for Luca. I don't think he's being overlooked. I mean, that is That's crazy. quite the list, <laughs> quite the graphic to be a part of there. Shams, what is the big difference with Luca and Kyrie this season? Because it really, it just looks like two kids having fun. I think it's simple. It's winning. And I think that builds trust and having a full training camp, having a full season to really acclimate themselves. They, it, it was rushed, right? Like last year, Kyrie Irving came in midway through the year. They were trying to find a rhythm. It, it didn't go as well as any of, anyone on that team, that organization, wanted and the fact that Kyrie Irving, for the most part, has been able to stay healthy, stay on the floor, and produce at this significant level. He's playing at an elite level, uh, like he did last year in Brooklyn, like he has uh, over the course of his career. Uh, and I think Ky Luka Doncic truly seeing the greatness, the brilliance that we know Kyrie Irving is as a, as a player when he's on the floor, and realizing, both of them, that in order for this team to win, it starts with them, the chemistry that they build, like that video of... Luka Doncic running from the scores table all the way to the other side of the court to pick Kyrie Irving up last night. Obviously, we didn't see that last season, but that just, to me, looks, looks like two guys that have built a lot of chemistry over the course of the year. And everyone I talked to around that organization, those two are really close now. Wasn't the case last year because of how quick that, that turnaround came post-trade, but with that training camp, with a full season, these two guys are bonded. These two guys are really close, and I think that chemistry is clearly driven uh, – everything this season for them. I just love it. It's like they're getting the best versions of each other. And that's, that's quite fun to watch uh, as a fan. All right, Shams, love you, mean it. I'll talk to you a little bit later and uh, we'll all be in LA Monday, bright and early. See you guys so very we'll soon. Safe travel, sir. We will take a quick break. When we come back, Rudy Gay back on the show. Up oh, there he is. He's ready. He's ready. Run it over. Run it back. Yeah, yeah. Run it over. Run it back. Run it over. Run it back. Run it over. Run it back. Yeah, you know that. Rudy Gay is on fire! Yeah! 
Netflix. Or tomorrow, I'm the man. Oh, that's right. He is back. Rudy Gay joins the show right now. Rudy, good morning. Oh, he's got and the up, shirt on. He's got, he's got of course he's got on. it. It's good. Oh, you we're, that? We're, we're starting there, by the way. We will get to the <laughs> NBA at some point. But yeah, UConn Huskies, first first to repeat as champ since 2007. Where are you ranking that team all time? Um, that team, man, that team was uh Man, that's that's uh, it's, it's tough. It's tough to say that, but you know, I, I you know, obviously I'm biased. But that was a that was a really impressive run, man. I, I haven't I haven't seen a team you know that impressive in a long time. At least not in my lifetime. I'm not saying before they didn't have it, but um, you know, that, that's an impressive team, man. What would, about two thousand seven when that? What about two thousand seven, Rudy, when them Gator boys went back to back? That was oh, your. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> I mean, that was. I don't know. I can't. I can't. I can't comment on that. I don't know too much about it. But other than that, you know, this deep cut team was pretty good. <laughs> they called me crazy. Looking at like a year 05 and 04 teams, I, you guys had more, I feel like, NBA players. That Your team was almost more talented than than these, than these this team this year, no? Yeah, we did. I I, I, I think that, that team did have more talent. I just don't think they we, we had the coercion like they did. Like uh, Coach Hurley, um, you know, and it's crazy to see that nowadays with, with what's going on with the portal and, and NIL where kids can just leave. Um, Coach Hurley found a way to get this team to jail. Look, if if you had to put your, your Mount Rushmore together of UConn players, oh, and, we, and and we can do it. We, let's do a basketball style. We'll do five spots instead of the four. Give me your, give me your Mount Rushmore UConn style. Damn. Uh, my Mount Rushmore, I'd say, uh, obviously, you have that Ray Allen, Rip Hamilton, um, Kimba, for sure. Hmm. And this is just based off of UConn or? or, we, got or the, we, got the, we got the first top three. We got the first top three. I like three. the three. I'm, I'm, okay. Yeah. I'm with you so far. Oh, man. Uh, I'd say Cliff Robinson because he was one of the first ones. Okay, you know, you got to put him up there. Um. That's four, nail. right? Yep, that's and four. You, you nailed ben it. Gordon, you got your bass. You I say, look, 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 look. My, my, my Rushmore, I will, I will say Ben Gordon be be five. Ben Gordon to me was uh, he was a killer, especially in college. He was a killer. Campbell, Campbell was my personal favorite coming out of coming out of UConn and, and like yourself. But Campbell, Cardiac Campbell was was something to watch at that time. By the way, Rudy, Man, this is going to be. Complete random what? question, but is there any way Hurley's going to leave UConn and, and take this Kentucky job? Are you hearing anything? Man, I hope not. I mean, the thing about it is, you know, obviously, you know, Kentucky can offer him a lot of money, and uh, mm-hmm. but you also have to live in Kentucky. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think he's a Kentucky type person. You know what I mean? Uh, hey, we, we we got a thing for we got a thing for shitting on small towns on this show. Yeah, I don't that's know. Great. <laughs> Rudy fits right in. There we go. We just pissed off all of Lexington. Uh, who cares? Moving uh, to the that. NBA right now. I mean, obviously you play for Pop, and and I, why do I always get the Wemby questions? I just want to point out, I did not plan this. It just so happens destiny wanted me to do this. But <laughs> as far as coaches for Wemby. Um, we all talk about how this worked out perfectly and, and it wouldn't have been better anywhere else. Do you think that when you see pop coaching Wemby, that this was the perfect situation? Um, I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know what pop you're getting over there right now. You know, he's a little <laughs> older now. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know what, what's going on. You know, the game has changed a little bit, you know, so, um, I don't know, you know, I haven't been in the locker room or been back, but I, I know he has the knowledge to help the kid. And, um, obviously it has. This guy's running away with the with the with the rookie of the year, and um, you know, I, and also putting up some historic stats. So you know, it's 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 crazy to see him play. It's crazy just to look at him, but it's also crazy to see him play and, and be able to move the way he does. I think it's fun because we there are lists being put out. I, I, maybe the athletic the other day put out top twenty, top fifty, whatever. And the fact that they're including a kid that's just barely got here already on some of these top fill in the blank lists. Where would you put him right now if you had to? That gives me all the crazy questions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't I'd worry, they that, have to answer too. Uh, I, I would put, I would definitely put them top, top 30 players in the league. Okay. Plenty and of by the way, moving and up. And I think next year he can be as low as top 12. 
Like I think he's yeah. magnificent. I agree. Yeah, that's what I, I agree. Said, really, I, I said 24 all stars and plus the back. So he's in the mix right after the 24 all stars. Yeah, he's right behind. Right after. So top 30 is appropriate. Yeah. Not bad. Not Speaking bad. of all stars, uh, Rudy, you played with Kawhi Leonard in San Antonio. He's he's been in and out of the lineup, but now he's played the most games since that 2016-17 season. Now, do the Clippers this year with a healthy Kawhi Leonard have enough to win a championship? I mean, I, I definitely think they do. They have, uh, you know, their leader who is Kawhi, the championship caliber player. Um, is he on the court? Will he be on the court? I think that's that's internal. That's internal for them. But um, you know, I definitely think they have enough. Um, when it comes down to it, you know, playoff basketball is totally different than regular season basketball. You're not going to see those 130 point games with teams just winning. You might see a couple, but you know, I think when it comes down to it, you have to be able to give the ball to some people and. and and let them let them do what they do. And um, they have three or four people, maybe five people on that team that can do that. So um, that's going to be hard to beat. Oh, I'm glad you brought that up because it looks like they're probably playing <laughs> Dallas. Uh, and Jamal Everybody Crawford said it. Chandler. Wait, what? what? No, nah, Chandler. Th- Chandler wearing is Dallas. Huh? What they can give the ball to. I turned it around. You did turn it around. Why <laughs> would you do that right now? <laughs> it's like, it's like I'm waiting for the right moment. Gotcha. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah. That, so there it is. They're probably going to play Dallas. It, it's, that's what's happening. Jamal Crawford has made the argument that Luca and Kyrie are the most skilled backcourt ever. Would you agree with that? That's a, that's a big statement. Ever? Well, I mean, ever. Yeah. That, that's his, that's his, his, uh, never re- I, didn't ring a bell. All right. I didn't say it. My bad, Rudy. Go ahead. <laughs> ever? <laughs> ever? Ever? Look, ever? Ever? I don't know, man. That's his take, man. I don't know. You know? Um, like I said, that's his take. There's a lot of duos out there, but um, <laughs> Scotty you know, Pippen's a wing, dude. He's not a guard. That's not a backcourt. Right, that's that's cool. Well, LeBron and Kyrie was a better better match. Uh, better duo. I mean, well, we're talking duos. We're talking Ooh. Ooh. LeBron and D Wade. By the way, I mean, how about Steph and Clay? Steph and Clay. Steph and Clay. The point I mean, is, for him to say <laughs> ever, it's a little premature for this duo. That's all. I'm saying. And they haven't won yeah. anything yet. So it's like, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, by the way, not only have they not won anything, they missed the playoffs last year, and now they're the fifth seed this year. So that's a bold statement. That's a very bold statement. But, but, but with that, Rudy, do you think <laughs> do you think the Dallas Mavericks, out of all of the talent, of all these teams that's putting together bodies of work this year, do you do you think the Mavericks give uh, Denver the biggest threat in the West, or is it somebody else? Who would you like? You, I know you touched on the Clippers, but, but who do you think? Um... I think Dallas does. I think um, Luka is a matchup problem, man. Do you have Kyrie, who is all you know, who is technically a point guard out there doing what he does? So you know, Luka frees up Kyrie to be what he what he is and what he wants to be, which is a bucket getter. So you know, they're a matchup, and they and with the with the trades they made with Gafford, Gafford's playing out of his mind. Uh, PJ Washington's knocking down jump shots and playing big um, on defense. So it's. You know, I think they're they're definitely a team to watch. They're you know they're not a pushover, not your average five seed. I would say. Hmm. Rudy, we've been talking all year long about the Warriors. Is this the end of this dynasty? Is you know is, does Steph hate Draymond? Is he over all the antics? <laughs> Steve Kerr over it? But they're eight and one in their last nine games, and they look to show some promise here and some confidence going to this play-in tournament. It looks like it's going to be against the Lakers. Do they have enough to not only get through the play-in, but to make a run and, and survive in advance in the first round of the playoffs? I will say, um, playing games are different. Being the playing uh, for an older team is not ideal. You know, it's not ideal for them to have to, you know, fight that uphill battle like they're going to have to if they want to, um, you know, continue through these playoffs. Do I think the dynasty's over? I don't know. I mean. I mean, from the looks of things, you can say that, but you know, you know, if they have some fight in them, we'll see. You know, during these, during these, um, during these, uh, during these, the, the, these playing games. But you know, it's gonna, it's gonna be fun to watch. You know, to, to have the Lakers versus uh, the Golden State hmm. Warriors in, in in a play-in series is crazy to even think about. And I'm, and, and we're getting old, fellas. So it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Start to see y'all- that. 
This is why I love this next question because y'all are getting old. Um, we all are, but you're still younger than LeBron, which is crazy to me to say out loud yeah. sometimes. Uh, and we know what he's averaging, the 26 points, all those good things. Is there a world where you see a fifth title in LA for LeBron? Uh, this question's for me. Oh, yeah. Brandon, <laughs> 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 you follow up. Hey, Lakers fan base is crazy. I don't know if I want to say what I want to say. <laughs> hey, listen, listen, Rudy, on, on this side, you can say whatever the hell you want. They're going to oh, get okay. mad either way. Just say it. Okay. It's a fact. I don't know, man. They have, uh, they, you know, they have to do a lot of work in free agency for that to happen. <laughs> you know, uh, you can't depend on a 40-year LeBron to lead you to another championship at this point. I don't think so. Um you know, he's put up some crazy numbers and, and, and I mean, it will be, it will be, you know, it'll be a, a great ending to his career to see him get another one, but it's going to be hard. They're going to have to go to, um, go, go into the free agency. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of big free agents out there or one big free agent that they can get, um, hmm. that, uh, that can help them. But you know, this year, I don't think so. What do you think's the bigger deal to LeBron? The fact that if he's going for a fifth title or the importance of getting to play at least one season with Bronny, probably in LA. I mean, for the person with, with the kind of accolades he has, I think the biggest thing for him will be to play with his son. Um, just like any of us with, with kids, you want to be out there and show them the ropes before you go. So, um, you know, um, and I'd like to see that, to be honest with you. I think people, People, um, I think he deserves it. He's put enough into this game to, to be able to play with his son and, and teach his son before he goes away. I like looking at Chandler and Lou trying to read their faces. Like, what do they think about this? Um, I mean, by okay, the way, talk- I think yeah. it'd be really, I think it'd be really cool. I just, I, I, is he, would he would be talking about him if his last name was a James Miley question, but I do think he's got the potential to be a better pro than he was at USC, which obviously is in his favor. And I think it'd be so dope to see him play with LeBron. That'd be awesome. Definitely, yeah, I mean, I, I, never seen it. I really think the kid can play, man. He can actually play. I don't know. If, I don't know if, you know, well, he's also LeBron's son. So people expect him to be, you know, yeah. what is it? You know, LeBron in 03, so 03, 04. And it's not, you know, I don't think any of us basketball players, anybody on this, on this show thought that was going to happen. So hmm. it is what it is, man. Just let the kid live his life and, and live his own, you know, do his own thing. Uh, we've got Jokic as MVP. We've got SGA as MVP on this show. Who do you have? <laughs> you gotta Damn. answer it. No one will get mad. Nah, it's, it's like you can't you can't deny what Jokic is doing, uh, what he's been doing for the past couple of years. But to have to have a uh, number two three seed in Oklahoma with all the young players, what their average age? I think it was. You know, I think what was it? North Carolina's team, college team, was older than than, than that, Oklahoma Sunday. Yeah. Crazy. That's crazy to me. That's crazy. <laughs> and for them to sustain that kind of winning percentage over this season, it, you know, I think. Uh, although I love Joker, I think you got to give it to SGA, man. For that, for that matter. Rudy, I appreciate the T-shirt. It's like you. It's like you knew. What we wanted. What t-shirt? Uh, oh, this one. Sh- yeah, no, that, oh, one, okay. that one right there. We appreciate it. Thanks so much oh, this for your time. Thing. We'll take this thing. We'll take a quick break. <laughs> we'll be back. That man right, has a family. Running back, running back, run it all, running back, run it all, running back. Very impressive. Man, we gotta look out for everyone here. That man does have a family. We start with Gary Payton the second. We get a lot of those. I like that. By, by the. Is it a foul? There's a lot of body. I like it. Let him, let him play. Yeah, I mean, what, are, what are we doing? I don't care. No more fouls for the rest of the season. Obi Toppin. Oh, oh yeah. Is. Oh my gosh. That was something. Watch your head. Jeez. Weez. Like that one. That one's angry. angry. Every time. Yeah, how many times is Kelly Olinick on that side of a dunk? Do we have a tally? A lot, a lot Michelle. Yeah. A lot. I, let's get stat. Let's get stats on that if we could. Thank you. He's also, uh, th- he's also three feet under the rim. I know. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. How a dunk! Come on, Jackson. I love when Jared Allen does that. Come on, you on a three on one, Jackson? They always tell yeah. you don't get buried under the rim, man. You gotta get up yeah. there to the dot. It's always mm. interesting to me when they had no chance of actually blocking it. 
Oh. You don't know it in the moment, maybe. I don't know. This body. Yeah, Claxton. Okay, okay. Bully ball. Oh. Got oh, and mask off. off. <laughs> That's okay. Smart. Break your face mask, why don't you? Yeah, why are you doing all that? All right, Gigi Jackson. G. What a fun story oh. from the season. The get back on Jared Allen. Oof. Oh, my gosh. Oof. Youngest player in the NBA, Gigi Jackson. I mean, he's gotten a lot of uh, attention. Good, great attention. This has been a positive side note, I suppose. Now, this one oh, right here minute. is insane. Oh, my God. Come <laughs> oh here. Oh, my God. Oh. Ross. Oh. My you know, Oh, my You know goodness. what, too? This dude, Brandon Miller, loves and his goat is Paul George. This highlight looks just like Paul, Paul George. George. Yeah. That's this is fun. Paul George over Birdman, Pacers versus Heat, where he just absolutely yum oh. and bodies mm. him. All right, this next one was a moment, uh, Christian Brown. That is Rudy Gobert, and I, oh, I, I accept the left. that. <laughs> hey. The left foot, left hand is nice. And a, and a bit of a little stare, sort of. Okay. No, I like this. Do dudes like Rudy Gobert? I can't tell. We talked about this already, Michelle. Don't open this no, can I know, of but I, I'm, I'm watching the game last night, and I'm like, I don't think anyone. Why don't you stir the pot? Keep a stir the pot. There you go. Well, maybe someone's watching for the first time today, so the answer is no. Okay, good. I'm just gonna say it. Lou said no. Uh, <laughs> we're coming up some more. Run it back. <laughs> Lou hates Rudy. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. The road to the NBA Finals starts now. New customers on FanDuel can go on their own playoff run with 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose with any $5 bet. Use your bets on same-game parlays, live bets, championship futures, and so much more. There's no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. Just download the app, get started. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Chandler, where are you and why? I am in Atlanta, Georgia, and I will be on TNT's alternate broadcast tonight. True TV is part of a fan duel partner doing the bet cast for the doubleheader tonight. Michelle, thanks for asking. The, the doubleheader. Are you uh, yeah, rested and prepared? Just, do you have in, do you have interesting things to say? You know me, just just trying to provide for my family and put food on the table. Just working overtime, Michelle. Lou, go. are you going to host him at all while he's out there? How does this work? I mean, you guys are so close. I tried. Yeah. I tried. He's a he's a busy man, so maybe I'll send some some old catering over. You guys like wings over there? <laughs> we do, we do. I told Lou, I said, hey, I get off at 2 a.m. That should be your sweet spot. I'll call, I'll call. <laughs> right, on, right on time. That's Dang, right on you time. get off at 2? Is that right? Well, I could be one, depending on this game. Hopefully it doesn't go to, you know, the games you do in studio always go to like double overtime. I'll be there till 3 a.m. probably. The key to doing that, though, doing studio games, is you never say the word overtime out loud. You just guaranteed it. We'll see you guys Monday. Run it back. Run it up. 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 Run it back. Run it up.